So I thought I'd do something different this morning. That's venture into the local woodlands, bit of a change from the fell walking. Um, I thought it'd be a good idea to start my second project of the year. I'm currently um, doing a project based on black and white photography in the Yorkshire Dales called Carved, which is on my website. So today I'm going to start a project, I'm going to name it Woodland 35. The reason Woodland 35 is, the 35 is based on the fact that I'm going to use one focal length throughout 35mm. I'm using my 16 to 35 Canon lens. The uh, reason I'm using this is because of image stabilisation and it's fairly dark. But why don't I use a tripod? Well, that's another part of the brief of the project. I'm going to do handheld only. Handheld only. So, the brief is woodland photographer, square cropped, 35mm only. You see, this is the sort of thing which I'm looking at. See the frame, frame that, that can create some weird and wonderful shapes going on there with the branches. Um, so I need to think, do I want depth in that? What lies beyond that shot? It's more time, nothing's popping out. I'll tell you what is quite abundant. Uh, bronze leaves are still still hung on to the trees that have been blown off following the winter. What an awful winter we've had. we're having. Absolutely terrible. Just sweat and windy and bleh. That's another reason I've ventured into the woodlands to be honest. To get away by the, from the rain. Um, yeah, it's end of winter and the foliage obviously hasn't grown as yet but there's still a bit of shelter going on. So I'm trying to frame this. The problem I've got is I'm introducing quite a lot of the sky which is quite distracting. And I'm moving back and forth. It's exposure. So F4 is 13th of a second. That's some 400 ISO. But as I said before, we have image stabilisation. It's not going to quite work this. Might move around a bit, see what else there is. Ooh, along the twisted, twisted branches. This is really nice. Just not sure. Okay, I'm going to have a go at this. So what have we got? It's overexposed. I'm going to introduce a lot of sky into this. So basically what I'm doing, there's two uh, tree, trees on the left hand side of the frame. It gets just balancing the um, composition of its verticals. As opposed on the right hand side of the frame, we've got this lovely twisted pattern. So I'm just going to frame that up there. I'm going to focus, single point focus, on the nearest branch, F4 as well. So that's, I'm going to throw the focus slightly out, which is just going to add to the uh, feel of it. Always good to play around with the apertures, you know. No, it's not about F11. Right. What have we got here? Okay. Nothing special, but it's an opening shot. So I mentioned before, some um, nice bronze and leaves just hanging onto the branches. And woodland photography is all about creating some contrast in your images. And I've seen this little sapling here. There's a nice background going on. Uh, some nice diagonals with the uh, trees are slightly sloping. So this sapling here is venturing out, venturing out, leaning out to the right hand side, whereas the trees in the background are into the left hand side, creating a contrast. So I'm going to try and frame this up, if I can. 
because it's rather muddy. Mm. Really changed me four colour then. But to stay disciplined, you're working on a project. Now bear in mind that I'm aiming for square cropped images, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to change the aspect ratio to one by one and go on live view mode just to help me frame up. The general rule to avoid camera shake when shooting handheld is to ensure the shutter speed is at least the same as the focal length. In this case then, a shutter speed of 1 40th of a second should have been fast enough with a focal length of 35mm. Added to that, however, working with a lens that has a four-stop image stabilisation should, in theory, allow a much slower shutter speed, down to one-fifth of a second. What I also needed to take into account, however, was the mild wind causing slight movement of the leaves which left this image slightly soft. I co-hosted a workshop last week with Chris at Sale and I got asked the question how do I approach intimate photography, close-up photography? Uh, I find it so difficult, and it is difficult, and my answer to that is just have the right mindset, just focus on one job at a time, focus on that, your intentions, and don't allow your mind to uh, sway off and go wide angle, and also just make sure that you keep within a, an area, a confined area, and just take your time, I've heard that many times before, but explore it, if something catches your eye, which in this case there's something going on here, but I'm not quite sure what, then just put some time aside, explore it, slow down, and then move on. It's a nice old silver birch here, and still got the contrasted leaves going on, so I'm just going to play around with the shapes here. I'm just going to walk around the scene, probably do a few laps, but like an idiot. There's a few dog walkers hanging around actually. One day I'll get picked up and put in the back of a van. Who's that idiot just walking around in circles? It's me. Good idea just to get a feel of your environment. No, nope. decided to move on, there's nothing here, nothing to see, move on. So what I'm doing here, again using live view, aspect ratio is still one, one to one, frame up. I'm using the roots of this tree here as a leading line. And then that leads you onto the sweeping natural line of the landscape, which is catching some beautiful light. And that is balanced by the vertical trees in the background. I've seen something, again, it's working with the verticals slightly converging into each other. There's something there, something there. I'm going to explore around this little small area. You know when something attracts you, 
you walk to a scene you think, yeah, well then you get close you think, well, what was I looking at? And it's often the initial, your initial reaction, which is the right one. I visited this location many times, but I've always come across something new on each occasion. A different composition that has attracted me. This may be down to changing conditions, seasons, and possibly a case of simply being a different day where my mood or mindset has led to an alternative approach. Woodland photography can be quite daunting, I understand that. But the thing is with Woodland photography is it's so accessible. There's always a wood, I'm sure, nearby. Just get out when the weather's not too good. Um, just get out to your local woodland. If nothing else, it's good practice. And you can combine it with a, a walk out with a dog or perhaps the missus. Just venturing off for a little minute. You can get away with that. But if you approach it like any other genre of landscape photographer, i.e. thinking about your composition, your placement, the third, etc., using natural frames and lines, then I'm not saying it's easy, it's not easy, but it will become much simpler. The rain is coming, and that's my signal to get back home in a good little session. This. I've basically done a full circle back to my tree, taking a shot, not sure about it, but being a good little morning this, good little morning. Remember, woodland photography, it's, if you take the same approach as any other general landscape photographer, just keep it simple, keep it simple, take your time, don't move on to another um, area until you think you've got the most out of it. Don't allow it to be, become too daunting. So, next week I'm going to continue with my project because I'm heading back to the Yorkshire Dales. In the morning I'm co-hosting a workshop uh, with my good friend Chris Sale. Looking forward to that. And then, photography show and then after that a good hike as well. So I hope you enjoy this good little session. I have, I know I have. And remember I'll add these images to my website uh, just look under project and the project is called Woodland 35. Right, I'll say my goodbyes, keep smiling. Bye bye for now. <laughs>